Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene an executive session and a regular meeting on Tuesday, July the 2nd, 2013 at 5.45 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of Brownsville City Hall, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Executive session item A, discussion to consider an offer to lease the premises known as the Cueto Building Complex located at 1301 East Madison Street, Brownsville, Texas, to the University of Texas system through its Board of Regents pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071 on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Rules of Professional Conduct of the State of Bar of Texas clearly conflict with the Texas Open Meetings Act and pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.072, deliberations to discuss the lease of real property. Move to go into executive session. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll be right back. Okay. Pledge of allegiance and the I'm sorry. Pledge of allegiance yeah. and invocation. Uh, we're going to start out with the Pledge of Allegiance uh, that I'd like for Dutch, uh, for you to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would. And then the invocation is going to be done by Juan Morales, uh, who is, where's Juan? There's Juan, okay. Do the pledge, if you would, Dutch. Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you once again in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, first of all, we give you thanks for all the blessings you have given us. And mighty God, we pray for our president, we pray for our governor, and we pray for our mayor, Tony Martinez. And Lord God, we pray for all the commissioners, we pray for all the leaders of the city of Brownsville. Mighty God, I pray that you will grant them the power of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, each and every one of them. And mighty God, we give you thanks for Melissa Zamora, Lord God, for her service. Lord God, I pray that you will bless her and bless her future endeavors that he will do in this city of Brownsville. And mighty God, we pray for the new commissioner, Deborah Portillo, in a mighty way. I pray that you give her wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And Lord God, help us to understand and realize that one of these days we will be accountable for all the decisions we make. And I pray, Lord God, that you grant them the power of the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to make good decisions for the city of Brownsville. Mighty God, I pray for each and every one of them, and I pray for our citizens of the city of Brownsville, this great city. Lord God, bless it. And mighty God, I pray for this 4th of July, oh, the birthplace of America. Oh, mighty God, I pray for blessings uh, of this country, especially for those that are fighting for our country in other countries, Lord God. 
And mighty God, I, I prayed, Lord God, for these 19 uh, firefighters that gave their life in Arizona. Uh, mighty God, I pray for their families. I pray for each and every one of them. Lord God, bless them, give them comfort. And Lord God, I just pray that you be in this time of crisis in their lives. Mighty God, bless this meeting in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Morales. Appreciate that very much. Action on item discussed in executive session, item A, consideration and action to authorize the leasing of the Cueto Building Complex located at 1301 East Madison Street, Brownsville, Texas, to the University of Texas System through its Board of Regents and authorizing the city manager, deputy city manager, or assistant city Excuse manager. Excuse me, just a second, Estella. I think there's some people out there that says they can't hear. Is that, is that true? Okay, Mr. Action item A, consideration and action. Can you hear it now? Okay, thank you. Consideration and action to authorize the leasing of the Cueto Building Complex located at 1301 East Madison Street, Brownsville, Cameron, Brownsville, Texas, to the University of Texas system through its Board of Regents and authorizing the city manager, deputy city manager, and assistant city manager to execute any documents necessary to execute such lease. It's Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. I think the next one is a presentation. Presentation to Commissioner Melissa Zamora, recognizing her public service for the city of Brownsville during her term as city commissioner for District 3. Okay, and I think this belongs to the city manager. It is, it is with great honor that I want to present uh, our plaque to Commissioner Zamora for <laughs> the wonderful four years that she has served as commissioner to our great city of Brownsville. And I would like for her to come.
that the easiest thing to do is to vote with your heart and vote with your gut and stand up for home. Some people will say that that's the hardest thing to do, but the hardest thing to do is to go home knowing that you voted because of peer pressure or because somebody made you do it that way. It's difficult to live with decisions like that, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have followed that advice my four years. Um, you know, sometimes it's difficult for other people to do that because of the number of people they know in this community, the family that they know here. I have no family here other than the family that you see here, my daughter, my son, my future family. And they endured a lot because of my work here. Commissioner, on behalf of all our employees, we love the time we spent with you and uh, wish you all the luck. Uh, we know that so you. God bless you. They're tremendous, always very responsive. They don't get the credit that they deserve. They really don't. They receive lots of criticism from the community, and it's undue criticism because they work many, many hours, weekends, evenings. <coughs> Pay raises are far and few between, and they deserve the credit for everything that you do with them. They both do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, post election business. Mayor, now we'll continue with that with uh, item one of that section consideration and action on resolution number 2013 043, canvassing and declaring the results of a general municipal election held on June the 22nd, 2013, for the purpose of electing a commissioner <coughs> district three. If I may, I'd like to read the uh, resolution. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, approving the returns canvassed and declared, declaring the result of the runoff election held on the 22nd day of May of June 2013 for the purpose of electing a Commissioner District 3. Whereas on Tuesday, the second day of July 2013, during a regular meeting of the City Commission, the City of Brownsville, the City Commission canvassed the returns of the runoff municipal election held on dist in District 3 of the City of Brownsville, Texas on Saturday, June the 22nd, 2013 and found the results to be as noted on attachment A of this resolution. That should be up on the screen. Now therefore, it be, res be it resolved by the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, that the above election results serve as the final true and correct election results of the June 22, 2013 runoff municipal election, and that the City Commission officially finds and determines that said election was duly ordered, proper notice of said election was duly given, proper election officers were duly appointed prior to said election, and said election was duly held. The city has complied with the Federal Voting Rights Act and the Texas Election Code. Due returns of the result of said election have been made and delivered, and the city commission has duly canvassed said returns all in accordance with law and the resolution calling the election. That the city commission officially finds, determines, and declares the result of said election to be that Deborah Portillo is hereby declared to be elected as District Commissioner 3, and that this resolution shall become effective immediately upon its adoption to be approved and passed on this, the second day of July, 2013. Hear a motion. To approve. Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Item, Come, go ahead. Item two would be the issuance of certificate of election and administration of the oath of office for Commissioner-Elect District 3 and the assumption of duties of the elected official. Okay, and I understand uh, Nacho is going to do the honors. And uh, at some point in time, Brad, I think you will have a prayer for the new commissioner. So if we can proceed.
not directly or indirectly paid. Offered or promised to pay. Offered or promised to pay. Contributed or promised to contribute. Contributed or promised to contribute. Any money or thing of value. Any money or thing of value. Or promised any public office or employment. Or promised any public office or employment. For the giving or withholding of a vote. For the giving or withholding of a vote. At the election at which I was elected. At the election at which I was elected. So help me God. So help me God. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Judge. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, and Commissioner Zamora has just pointed out, public service can be a very daunting and unenviable task. But I also believe that giving back to one's community can be one of the most rewarding jobs. That is why I'd like to thank, first of all, Debbie for wanting to give back to our community and serving as City Commissioner, and for inviting me to be part of this joyous occasion, not only for her and her family, but for the City of Brownsville. Debbie was born here and raised here in Brownsville, and she proudly carries the Portillo family name. As some of you may know, most of you may know here in the community, the Portillo family began their jewelry business when they opened up their first store not too far from here on 14th Street many years ago. There, Debbie was able to witness firsthand her parents' hard work and sacrifice, and while she received gifts that will last her a lifetime. A good work ethic, the importance of an education, and most importantly, strong family values. With that foundation, Debbie, I have no doubt that you are ready to help lead our great city. And with that in mind, I'd ask you to please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I Deborah, Deborah Portillo, Portillo, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that, I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the duties as Commissioner District 3, the duties as Commissioner District 3 of the City of Brownsville, Cameron County, of the City of Brownsville, Cameron County, of the State of Texas, of the State of Texas, and I will, to the best of my ability, and I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the United States, and of this state, and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to say all my words in prayer. So just lay your right hand here. Father God, as your prophet Samuel anointed King David to be king, we ask for your supernatural anointing tonight on Deborah Potillo. Lord, that you would give her divine inspiration, divine wisdom, help her to see the far reaching effects of each decision. Lord God, when any temptation comes, I ask you to give her the character and the strength to say no and to do what you lead her to do. Cause her to ask you for direction each time she has a decision. And Lord, I ask you to give her a craving for your word, the Bible, which will give her more wisdom. And I thank you and praise you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, Charlie. I want to thank particularly the whole family uh, for being here tonight and being supportive. Uh, congratulations on this wonderful win. And uh, the Portillo family will continue uh, in their tradition of being fine leaders and uh, a great example for the rest of the community. So thank you all so much for being here tonight. And thank you, Judge, for being here. Nice words. Thank you, Judge Tortilla, for those kind words and for being here with me today. I'd like to thank the voters for electing me as their representative for District 3 in our wonderful city of Brownsville, Texas. I'd like to thank my family, friends, and supporters for accompanying me on this long and rewarding journey. 
I thank God for giving me the strength to do what is right because it is often the most challenging path. I promise to keep our wonderful city best interest at heart. I want to make Brownsville better for future generations to come and I plan to work tirelessly towards these efforts. I look forward to working with my fellow commissioners, Mayor Martinez and city staff. I would like to thank Commissioner Melissa Zamora for her four years of service and for setting a good example for me to follow. I began this journey with my favorite Theodore Roosevelt quote, and it is only fitting that I find another one of his quotes to inspire me as I begin this new endeavor. Far and away, the best prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Thank you. It's very nice, very good. Estella, next. Next items are workshops. Workshop item A, hike and bike master plan. Mayor, City Commissioner, uh, congrats, Debbie. Um, about six or seven months ago, the commission approved some funding for a uh, community-wide hike and bike uh, master plan. Um, at that time, we went through a um, uh, purchasing procedure and uh, we hired uh, Jim Carrillo with Half Associates. He's perhaps probably one of the best in the state of what he does, which is bike planning. So uh, we've had a, a lot of public engagement. We've been at a lot of events. We were at Sombrero Fest, we were at Ciclovia. We, we've done a lot of, of work that, that has culminated in this presentation. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna say anything else. I'm gonna hand it over to Jim so, sh so he can show you uh, what we've done and, uh, and, and what we've come up with. Thank you, Ramiro. Uh, Mayor, commissioners, appreciate the chance to be here. I looked at the clock because I love to talk about trails, and I could sit here and talk to two and a half hours for you, and I'm sure you don't want that, so I'm going to limit myself to just a few minutes and go over this. This is kind of, I guess we call it a checkpoint. We're coming close to the end of this effort, and before we come back to you in a, in a few weeks with the final sort of recommendations and results and the, the implementation strategy, I wanted to go over it with you and just have you look at it and make sure we're on the right track. We've got some really good ideas, some great things all over the city, and there's some incredible opportunities in Brownsville to take a, a significant leap, leap forward in terms of trails and, and accessibility all over the city. So I'm, I'll talk about that as we go through this. The trails are very important from a lot of different aspects. We all sort of get some of these from health benefits, tourism benefits but increased property value, uh, just the, the proximity to trails. And one of the things we're actually finalizing right now is a look at some of those to actually give you some concrete numbers that if you build trails, this is what it might do to the areas around that. So we'll bring back that back to you uh, shortly. So it's a really good asset to have. And also when you're trying to attract uh, the creative folks and the, lots of businesses to Brownsville, this is one of the things that can make a huge difference. Everyone rides. And if you took a poll and you said, everyone, you know, what, we've done these surveys, and most people at some point in time, in time in their lives have ridden. Some of them ride more frequently. Some of them just ride occasionally. But anyone can ride. It's something that anybody can do, whether you're young or old. And this map, it's kind of hard to see in there, but if you see the big circles on the map, the yellow circle is a 15-minute bicycle ride. And look how much of Brownsville that covers. And that's a 15-minute bicycle ride that you and I can do most of us here in this room can do. This is not somebody who's in perfect shape. This is just most of us. The orange circle is about 10 minutes, and that's what the usual ride is, about two to three miles to get somewhere. So think of kids going to school, think of you maybe going to a park nearby, all these different ways in which you can cover so much in Brownsville. As Ramito said, we talked to a lot of people uh, during this process. Got a lot of responses back about 
what people did and your residents and, and uh, exercise and recreation is the majority of what they do right now. We'd like to change this a little bit so in five or ten years, if we were to ask this question again, that top part, going to school or running errands, would be three or four times what it is now. So instead of being 7%, it might be 20, 30%, or maybe even higher than that. So that means that everyone's getting out and just riding and doing different things. But why don't your, your residents ride? Well, no trails, no sidewalks. Over and over again, we found that people say that they don't feel safe. And that's everywhere, not just here in Brownsville. So the biggest hurdles are traffic and inconsiderate drivers, people who just don't know how to ride around a driver on bicycles, and then the facilities that aren't, aren't, aren't there. The kinds of sort of this is a menu of the different kinds of things we're going to do. Trails, uh, similar to the battlefield trail, which you see a picture of here. Side path, this is along University. Uh, bike lanes, this is along Alton Glore. Very nice facility to ride, but only for so those who feel comfortable riding with traffic. Many of us, unfortunately, don't feel comfortable going out there with people going by at 35 or 40 miles an hour. We might feel more comfortable with this, where it has a wider stripe and it separates us a little bit more from those cars. And then the ultimate, the, the sort of the preferred facility is what's called a cycle track which is where we actually have a curb or something that separates you from those cars and so you feel a little bit safer and more secure. And these two that you see, the top two are from Austin. The bottom one is from Europe and that's kind of a very nice sort of super highway for, for people riding in bicycles. In a few places we'll do this, shared lane markings, which is on streets where you don't have the space for a bicycle lane, but at least it tells the drivers that are there that this is a great place where people are going to be riding, there's a destination there and they want to get to that. So where are you now in terms of trails in, in Brownsville? And we're talking about the major trails, not necessarily the little smaller ones in parks that a lot of people go to and walk, which are great, but the ones that actually go somewhere. And you can see the Battlefield Trail in there, the Hudson Area Trails, and then the Belden Trail, which is about to be ready and, and, and opened up, are really the main trails that you have right now. The number at the bottom shows a ratio that you can use to track to your population. So right now, for where you are, about 22,000 residents, if you could take 22,000 residents of Brownsville, they would fit on one mile of trail that you have in the city. What we want to do is take that and cut that in half. So maybe at some point you have one mile for every 10,000 residents, even as you continue to grow and approach 300,000 or even more residents in Brownsville. That means we have more trails that are accessible all over the city for everyone to ride on. The blue line that you can barely see in the middle of the screen, and I'm sorry about that, but uh, is a side path, and the, the one at the top is along Morrison. So that's a way you can get from the battlefield trail to many other places. And then the red lines are, are, are uh, bicycle lanes, and you have many more of these, and you've been adding a lot of bicycle lanes even in the last year or so that are really adding a great network throughout the city. So what we want to do is, these are the key goals that will guide both you, your staff, and then others that come after you, because this is a longer term plan. We want to make sure that we have balance city-wide, so there's something for everyone, so they can take those two to three mile trips all over the city. They can be used for any purpose. So this isn't just for someone who wants to get out there and ride you know, very fast. It's parents can ride with their children. They can go to school, so there's a lot of different purposes. We want to be able to get anywhere in the city. So someday there's this network that connects everyone together. There's emphasis on short trips. And we definitely want to get more kids walking and riding to school. Uh, in, in the considerations that we're using, and this is very important because in some cities, these don't always apply. But we want to make sure that there is a preference for separation from traffic so that most of your residents can get on something where there's not adjacent to cars, where they feel safe. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't take away, in many places, on-street parking unless it's appropriate. So if we have a wide street where we, can, we don't need that parking, but are there, so, there are some streets where those residents need that parking, and we want to make sure that's maintained. We look at the number of driveways and intersections, because people coming out of that that can create unsafe conditions, where those destinations are. And then if there's a chance to put something on street, it is cheaper to do it, we'll try to do that. So again, this is where you have all your existing facilities. This is the trail network citywide, all these different trails, and I'll highlight a few of these in just a minute. And then this is the uh, side paths that are being added all over the city, dashed lines, and then the bicycle facilities that could be added into this. And so this gives you 
an ultimate network that you can see covers all parts of the city. So you could, if you wanted to go from the sports complex in the northern part of the city all the way to downtown, you could do that. If you wanted to go from the southmost area into downtown, you could do that. You could really cover all parts of the, all parts of the city. And this is important. This shows you right now, if you took a half mile from the existing trails, this is kind of who's close to the trails. If we were to come back here in maybe, let's say, 20 years from now, and we were to build all of the trails that were shown in this plan, this is how much of, that's of the entire city of Brownsville would be within a half mile of one of those trails. So you can see it covers most of the city. Not everywhere, but almost all of the city is covered. And there may be even other opportunities that can further enhance that. So let me highlight, a, but let's call it the top 10 or the top 12 uh, different uh, areas where we can look at recommendations. Uh, the number one, and these are not ranked by number, so don't think that just because it's number one, it's the most important. They're all important. Uh, trail for the southmost area, I'll talk about that in a minute. Continue the university uh, side path. Let me see if this has a laser pointer. So this is uh, the, the university area trail. Continue that towards the southmost area. Downtown connections, I've got, we've got some great ideas for the downtown area and some great grant opportunities that you have out right now to enhance that. Uh, trails on the east side of, of, of Brownsville along Billy, Billy Mitchell, there's some opportunities for bike lanes. A connection from the border crossing into the downtown area, so if you think about that, being able to actually ride across and then go into the downtown area with having, with, that might reduce some congestion. Uh, connections in the mall area, so that you can get from some of the neighborhoods and actually ride your bicycle to the mall. What a concept. Who would think that any of us would do that? But if you're only half a mile away, you can put your things in a bicycle and you have a great place to park your bike there, what a wonderful opportunity that, that might be. Uh, connections to the battlefield trail from the neighborhoods around it. Uh, on Coria, uh, some connections up and down that which would make it a bicycle boulevard, perhaps one of the first in Texas uh, that you might have that takes you north and south on the west side of the city. Throughout the city at many different schools, whether it's in the southmost area or the east side or, or uh, all over the city, small connections to schools that might be uh, maybe a quarter mile of sidewalk or side path to be able to help get kids from the neighbor, nearby neighborhoods to the, to the schools. And we saw many schools where you're right, live literally right there and there's no connection to it and no ability to get that. So that's something that I know your school district and your staff are trying to address that and have already looked at some of these and got some great results, but finish that up and get the other schools connected. The Union Pacific Railroad, a connection along there, uh, and using that perhaps maybe for a combination of a road and a uh, bike path, and then a connection from Cascade Park over across to the Battlefield Trail. So let me very quickly run through some of these, and again, I apologize with the lights on, it's kind of hard to see this, but I'll, I'll tell you the highlights of this and you can look at this. Uh, in greater detail later on. This is a trail connection of almost four miles all the way from the southmost area that ultimately would connect to the Battlefield Trail. And it would connect past some, some significant destinations such as Porter High School, right here. Uh, many of the other schools uh, in, the, in the southmost area gets to Walmart over here and goes past Walmart and then ultimately connects across over to the to Battlefield Trail area. So you don't have to ride all four or five miles of that. You could come from one of the areas nearby it and ride for half a mile and get to it. Again, imagine going to Walmart. You'll really shock the Walmart people showing up with a bicycle there and have a basket. <laughs> they might not like it because you might not buy as much, but it uh, could be something good. And this is what that trail would look like. So this is drainage areas there uh, that you could take that and convert those, add a trail on one side working with the uh, drainage districts to, to make sure that they can operate and maintain those areas adequately, but there are opportunities that are there and ready to happen. This is in the downtown area in 6th Street, connecting from uh, where the, the, the trail currently ends at the courthouse. Uh, and this is what it could look like in one scenario, which is putting up pylons and, and separating the, your, you, yourself from the traffic. The problem is that you put up those pylons and for some reason drivers are attracted to them and they hit them. <laughs> I don't know why that happens, but you go and you see them and they just happen to be, get hit a lot. So the better solution there might be to take that and create one of those curbed areas so it's separated from that. That curb can literally just be doweled into the street. You leave gaps for the driveways where those, those occur and it's a very safe and, and uh, wonderful place to ride your bicycle from the end of the trail all the way into the downtown area. In the downtown itself, 
on two or three streets within the downtown to be selected. Uh, you could look at something like this where you take the on-street parking that's there along one side of the street and maybe you say we don't need that particular parking there and you literally just build one of those curbs and you create a two-way area where again you're safe to ride your bicycle in the downtown area or you could even do it if you want to take a little bit more of an expensive approach fill that area in and create this area that's a bit raised and it also has a nice pedestrian area for, for people near it. Another one on the east, east side, this is along uh, Vera, Vera Avenue. Um, it's a great connection going from all the way from Perkins here to Champion and then all the way up and down in the east side going through different drainage areas and potential areas such as this that could be developed and because it's not developed yet you have the ability to influence that development and reserve an area along the drainage there that could be used for a trail. And this is what that trail could look like. This is Vera Street right now or Vera Avenue. And what it could look like in the future is, again, it's a simple trail, but it has the ability to transform that neighborhood and create this wonderful asset. And on top of that, it's a connection for all those kids to walk to the school that's literally right across the street from that. This is uh, something that can be done on many streets throughout the city. This is Wild Rose. But it's, again, it's very simple. Striping is very cheap to do. It's easy to do, especially in a place like this where you don't need the parking. But again, that buffered lane can really help give you a little bit more separation from traffic. And also, if you wanted to, you could come back and create that raised curb there and separate it in the future and create a, even more of a barrier area. Finally, just an example of a connection to school. This is in the uh, far, far southmost area. This is uh, the, uh, I think, Lopez High School here. And then this is the IDEA campus that's in that area there. And a lot of neighborhoods that are developing around those that, that were the children and the youth go to those schools but have no sidewalks and no place to walk there. This is what that street looks like now today. And you know, the, the kids do walk. They walk there. They just don't have a place to walk. So this would involve putting a sidewalk on one side or maybe a little bit wider, an eight or 10 foot wide sidewalk so that they could also ride their bicycles there. In some places on this one, it might in involve uh, the right-of-way isn't wide enough, so you'd have to find a little bit extra right-of-way. But to make that connection, it's a valuable thing to do to get that connectivity to those schools. Finally, the Union Pacific Railroad Corridor. Uh, and I know this is something that you're working through. And so this is just kind of one scenario in which it could be developed. It could be converted into a true rails-to-trails. And that railroad corridor could be turned into a trail either on the one side or the other, or literally where the rails, rails are today. Or it could be used as a combination railroad, rail, uh, trail and uh, roadway as well, uh, depending on how you wanted to do that. If you did do that, the trail would be off to one side. And again, it would be a long connection. There are few driveways and few areas cutting across it. So it would be a nice area to go pretty, pretty quickly and safely for many of your, your residents. Could also be a median, median divided boulevard. Of course, that takes up a little bit more space and less, less space for accommodation of drainage. So that's a snapshot of some of the ideas that we, are, we, we have. We are looking at uh, these as kind of a template for working all over the city in different areas with the idea that over time you begin to build that connectivity and that network throughout the entire city. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to do this, but you have some great support. And, and I will tell you that statewide, there is a lot of attention being paid to, to Brownsville uh, and what Brownsville is doing. I think a lot of this is to the efforts of Commissioner Gowan, who is really, really at the spear front of pushing this, but your efforts in supporting this as well and, and pushing it forward, and I really mean that. There are people at the state level uh, in many other cities who are saying, wow, you know, Brownsville is doing this. You are becoming uh, the forefront of what's happening in, 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 in Texas, and the city pulling together and creating a citywide network and connecting all parts of the city. So you can ride for fun, you can ride for recreation, you can ride to get to school, or you can ride for, uh, for, for, uh, for getting somewhere. So we'll be back in a, in a few weeks uh, with a sort of a wrap up presentation and a document, a draft document to, for you to look, look at. But at this point in time, I'd be glad to answer any questions and, and uh, any other follow up thoughts you may have or things you want us to, uh, to look at. Jim, I just wanted to, um uh, mention a couple of things and I appreciate all your work you know obviously commissioners and all of all of the people here actually they've been very very supportive of uh, of this effort um, but 
uh, kind of on a funny side, you know, in Amsterdam, uh, according to what I've been reading in, in the latest, they're now having bicycle traffic jams, okay? There, there, there are so many people riding bicycles, so make sure you plan that we don't have a traffic jam. Uh, and the other thing is, in your latest Time magazine, for those of you who read Time, uh, the uh, uh, issue of July 8th to the 15th, um, there's a, under the travel uh, guide, uh, they're talking about um, just brew it together at last, fresh air, exercise, and beer. So what they're doing is all these people that are crafting these uh, beer, uh, small beer uh, breweries, uh, they're kind of ending up at the end of the trail. And uh, it's happening in not only in Portland, Oregon, but in Portland, Maine, in Fort Collins. Uh, and it's a really cute article. It's sort of like saying at the end of the, of the ride, uh, I get a, a treat, and that's a beer. So uh, some of you might be teetotalers. I happen not to be one of those. but. Um, Anyway, I gave this to, to Commissioner Rose so that she could kind of incorporate it into your plan, okay? Thank you, thank you. I wanna, ta I wanna thank you, Jim, very much for your hard work and particularly want to thank city staff, Ramiro and Roman, for working so hard on this project. It has been a pure delight to watch you and, and listen to your thought process and listen to how you interact with, um, with the issues at hand for something that's really different for our community but very needed. So I, I thank you very much. I will be there right behind you and, um, and we'll get uh, a, even more progress going uh, in the next four years as we did the first. Mayor, I hope we have that problem with the traffic jam. <laughs> I do too. That would be thank, good. thank you so much. I just, you know, you. you know me, levity is just part of my life. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Workshop B is discussion regarding Dean Porter Park. Good evening. My name is Melanie Connor. I happen to be chairman of the Dean Porter Park Renovation Inc. Um, Honorable Mayor and members of the commission, we're here this evening to give you uh, an update on Dean Porter Park. I'm going to give you a little bit of history because some of you people um, might not have been born when we started this project. So um, on uh, a brief history, in 1999 to 2002, the original renovation of this 50-year-old 25-acre began. After several years of planning and raising funds, I'm going to tell you by phases what went on in that park. Phase one addressed the infrastructure, the roads, the sidewalks, the lighting, the updating, and construction at the outdoor large pavilion facilities, building 13 additional small barbecue areas, revamping and building the pool area and the splash water area, a new playground, exterior bathroom facilities, and fencing. Then we moved in to phase two, which was responsible for the new Ringo Pavilion, the cultural center housing the Children's Museum and the Costumes of the Americas Museum, and building an addition onto the Camille Playhouse and creating the Green Meadow, which brings many outdoor activities. Once completed in the spring of 2005, maintenance had a crew to care for the park. The garden area was to be completed by a, a city committee, but with budget cuts, it was unable to be done. Therefore, um, the um, phase one had already installed the, the sidewalks and the lighting, so it was ready. Mayor, the former Mayor Blanca Vela and her family graciously donated two lovely sculptures and a playscape for physically challenged children in hopes that the gardens would be completed. The last several years, the Dean Porter Park group has appealed and had made um, requests for allocations for funds to address the need. But because of the long term of neglect, funding necessary for these efforts had increased dramatically and other projects came before our needs. Now, 
the lack of adequate number of ground crews cannot keep up with the list of concerns that we just passed out for you. Let me remind you that the renovation was a $14 million project and its value has increased with those properties located there with their interior value that has made Dean Porter Park the envy of the valley and in South Texas. I do want to commend the Parks Department, specifically Chris, Hawk, and Elias, who have given their best on a limited number of funds and employees for this park and to the many, many city departments when called upon to give service where needed. But the park cannot continue to address the present long list of items identified with the limited number of park workers. We're here to ask your consideration to be in the for forefront in keeping Dean Porter Park in top condition and to address issues in a more timely manner. Our primary issues are those regarding the garden issues. And if you um, take the opportunity to drive by the park and notice the difference between um, the garden area, which is nothing but a dust bowl, and the area across the street, which has green grass and trees growing, it's awaiting the water irrigation and landscaping to bring it up to the standards of the rest of the park. We are understanding that another application is being made for that purpose this year, and we hope that it will come forth. Essentially, by adding more full-time workers in this park, we will be able to address the smaller issues on your list as they become necessary. Um, another prime concern is the amount of water which has washed beneath the Ringo Pavilion. By providing a bulkhead around that particular area in the park will allow supervision beneath the building and direct maintenance to the outside portion of the backside of that building. At this time, I would like to acknowledge our Board of Trustees, who is comprised of representatives of each of the groups represented in the park and also from the community. We have David Merrill beside us here. We have Beth Pace with the Children's Museum. We had Karen Ray uh, with the Costumes of the Americas, but she had to leave earlier. We have Gerilyn Kirkpatrick, who is a um, uh, uh, an accountant, and we have former Mayor Eddie Trevino who will serve on this board. And we also have two members uh, from the Parks Department. Chris is one and Yoli is the other. We meet quarterly. So at this time, I would like for David to step forward and uh, address you. Thank you very much for all of your attention and we hope that we will um, be able to see some uh, progress. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to be with you. My name is David Merrill. I am a volunteer with it. Uh, I, would, I would be remiss, Mayor, if I did not recognize Mrs. Connor for her work of more than a decade in seeing to it that this park is both completed and successful in its operation. It would not have happened and it would not be a continuing issue of success without her. And I, I think we are a round of applause. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also like to add my uh, compliments to the Parks and Recreation folks. I've only dealt with them recently on this particular issue, but I can tell you that they are both enthusiastic and uh, harried, but also very, very uh, anxious to do the best that they can for the citizens of Brownsville with the resources that they have. Uh, two true professionals dedicated to their work, so I thank them. The challenge is for you. It's, it's a wonderful coincidence that you just heard what a great, and I, who, could, who could not be excited about the potential for these uh, bike trails. Uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing that could happen for Brownsville, and I'm convinced that it will. 
At the same time, you're fa you have to face the fact that somebody's got to maintain that, and somebody's got to, in the future, got to be able to mow the grass, uh, clean the streets, all those things, repaint the stripes. That's your challenge, and it's a, it's a very significant one. We should all thank you for your willingness to take on this sort of a task. I heard it mentioned earlier that it can be very difficult, and I, I'm glad that you're willing to take on that task. But this task is shown to us in a most graphic way, and I'm sorry that it's not more visible, but you can make out, and I'm sure each of you at one time or another in the recent past has visited Dean Porter Park. You can see it. Uh, there, this, you used to be able to walk around the back of this building, and now you can't. Now, the building itself is not in jeopardy, except to the extent that you cannot maintain the outside of that side of it uh, with normal uh, measures. But you can imagine that eventually the street and sidewalk around it will be in jeopardy if it continues. Uh, this on the right hand side is the, what was referred to earlier today as the desert. Uh, it's directly across the street from a beautiful green park uh, that is uh, around the barbecue pavilion uh, and around the uh, Ringo Pavilion. And this is a, Hawk took these pictures for us today. This uh, is a panoramic vision of that, the green area. The park is a, a beautiful spot and it serves the city of Brownsville well. However, it, it, you've got a tough task figuring out how to allocate resources. You, I think we have the professionals who can tell you exactly what would be necessary to be able to maintain the, this park and all the other parks. And somebody told me today that we've like, in the, since 1990, we've quadrupled the number of parks that are available to, to folks in Brownsville, and we're constantly upgrading those without a significant increase in the number of staff or other resources. So I commend you and I thank you for your work. I thank you for the work that you are doing now, that you have done in the very recent past, the success that you're showing with these things on behalf of the cities, and good luck on figuring out how to do this. But we don't want a $14 million park with more than $5 million, nearly $6 million worth of private funds to be in jeopardy. It'll be hard to get that next $6 million grant. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. David, thank you so much. And, and again, I, th I think everybody on this commission uh, is fully aware we're in a very uh, comprehensive effort to try to do planning uh, in a different style than before so that we can address whenever we do uh, get another park or, you know, get some more green space, which all the city planners tells us, you know, is an important aspect for every community, just like we have the right, you know, the hike and bike trails. But maintenance and, and, and operation the, are essential. So thank you very much for coming here. We look forward to working with you. Thank you again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all in the park. Ride your bike over. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Melina. Appreciate it. mayor's report okay the mayor's report is, is going to be real brief but um, Debbie I wanted to congratulate you as a new commissioner uh, for uh, district number three but I also and I realized the family I, I really appreciate all your efforts I you know was watching it uh, uh, while you guys were uh, getting involved in the political campaign but I also would like um, to thank your opponent uh, mr. Sarkis for running uh, we all know that this is not an easy job, and it's not very thankful a lot of times, but uh, for all the people who do dare to run and put their hat in the ring, my, uh, my sincerest thank yous. Uh, I would, the only thing I would ask this community to do in the future, uh, in the elections, whatever time and whatever uh, positions are in place, is to make sure we encourage our neighbors and our friends to get involved in one way or another, because as you well know, the, the turnout is extremely low. Uh, but then again, uh, so is the pay. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, good luck to us, uh, Commissioner. The second thing, uh, and I think this also bears a, a little point of appreciation. You know, we all kind of take it for granted that everything that we all agree on on most everything or try to. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that uh, democracy is is messy. And it's just by its very nature. Everybody's going to have their ideas or, or things that they would like to prioritize. But the University of Texas, as well as the Texas Southmost College, 
have come to an agreement uh, to coexist in a fashion that I think will be very beneficial to the city. Um, so I really want to take this opportunity to thank all the trustees of Texas Southmost College. Um, I wanted to thank President Lily Tercero, uh, Chad Lewis. I wanted to thank the UTB administration, uh, Dr. Garcia, uh, Rosemary Martinez, Michael Putnett, uh, and the University of Texas Regents. And more particularly, a special thanks to Chancellor Sigaroa, who I think has championed the cause of not only the merger, but the medical school and every other aspect of bringing the best university, the best kind of education, the best of the best for all of us. And God knows that in today's economy, uh, that is such a, such a, a gift to us that we have someone like uh, Francisco uh, in that position. So uh, my heartfelt thanks goes to the chancellor and to all the regions. Uh, but I do want everybody to know, if you see a trustee or you see you know, the people from TSC, UTB, and say, good work, you know, let's keep it going. I know it hasn't been easy. It's not an event. It's a process. But they got it done. So uh, congratulations to them. And that's my report. Commissioners, anyone? Do you have anything? No? Anyone else? I do. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, save a date for August the 9th will be our next um, Ciclovia. It will be at night to escape some of the heat. So look out to the website for Ciclovia Nights coming up August the 9th. Okay. Oh, I think, do we have Chris from Parks to, with regards to the function for the 4th of July, to remind everybody? I don't know where Chris went. <laughs> I don't know the specifics, but I know it's going to be at the sports park. Yes. Chris, I think that Commissioner Vasquez wanted to see if you could give a, just kind of a little, uh, tell the people about the 4th of July celebration out at the sports park. Well, with the rain today, we were hoping it would stop. It did stop. Uh, the fireworks are actually ready to be put in tomorrow. Gates open at noon. The event starts at... <laughs> There's what? a lot more complexity. <laughs> well, no, I, did, I just missed the rain. Where was the rain? Well, there was some rain in the north of the park there. Oh, everybody. okay. Every 4th of July. <laughs> um, but 3 o'clock, the gates are going to... The gates will open at 12. 3 o'clock, the event starts. There will be music out on the uh, open uh, field turf. And we have some vendors. We have uh, pretty much tailgating area. It'll be a neat event. Last time it was there, we had a really good turnout. And uh, this year will probably be the best fireworks display that's been in the city. Uh, it, don't quote me on this, please. Uh, 28 to 30 minutes fireworks display, and it's a very good display. Okay. Uh, those are the events that yeah. are taking well, place. Well, it has a great turnout every year. I've been there for the last two years. I don't know, I'm not sure that I'll be around for this one. But um, anyway, Commissioner Vasquez is going to help me out with, with this event. but. I'm sure that I would encourage everybody to do it and enjoy. There was a nice article in, in the paper about, you know, the servicemen and, and, and uh, Joe Gonzalez and, and all his troops about how, you know, the great service that our men and women in the, in the armed forces do. So uh, go out and have a great time. Mayor, one more. Um, we have a traveling wall that's coming down from Fort Worth. It's uh, 30 foot by 6 feet high. And uh, the guys are just getting on the road first thing in the morning. It's a wall dedicated to the fallen soldiers, uh, servicemen and women uh, killed uh, that are from the state of Texas. And we will have them. They're coming on their own accord. They're not getting paid to come down here. They travel the state, and we were selected. I actually was able to make a call some months back, and I don't know how I got it, but they're going to be here. Um, and I would encourage the public to go out there and look at the wall because there are some fellow Brownsville or Rio Grande Valley um, uh, former soldiers. When is the wall arriving? Uh, tomorrow, and we'll have it set up for the 4th. Out at the sports park? Out at the sports park. Okay. Um, Charlie, if we could make sure it gets out in uh, whatever media you can get it out, Facebook, tweeting, whatever else, is to make sure that people know about this, because that's okay. a great, the, the that's a great invited, honor. The media is invited uh, once the wall gets there. The, so okay. Story as soon as well, but just make sure that the public knows about it. Okay? Yes, sir. Chris, do you know anything about the parade that's going to be on the 4th? I know that the Herald, um, I, I read it in a paper. It starts at 10.15 in the morning. It, what time? 10.15 in the 10, morning. 10.15 in the morning. Okay. I'm, I'm not too much on the, the Herald uh, <laughs> parade. They're supposed to brief us tomorrow on some I details. I know they always have a very cool parade, and it's cool to bring your kids out, and it's very festive. So well 10.15 on the 4th. On Elizabeth Street, yes. Always. The Charity okay. route. Thank, thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Presentations? Employee of the Month. 
Mayor, members of the commission, please help me welcome our employee of the month for July, Ruth Angelica Hernandez. And, uh, we call her Angie. Okay. Angie's Sounds been working sure. for the city for 14 years. She started in March 1999 uh, working at the library. Uh, she's been a, a, a technician, a fiscal technician for, uh, for many years. Uh, when we chose to create the grant writing department, we were very selective and as to the people that we wanted there. And Angie w was one of the people selected. Uh, she's been there ever since we created the department. She's taken great initiative, initiative in learning as much as possible about the grant writing department and their responsibilities. She handles the public and the p visiting people to that department very well. We are very pleased with her, and for that reason, we felt that she should be honored with the Employee of the Month for July. So, one of the prerequisites you always have to be on time, but we always honor the Employees of the Month with a, with a watch. And it is a lady's watch. The black. Honoring her for the Employee of the Month of July. And of course, she is eligible for the Employee of the Year at our banquet, which is held in December. So okay. congratulations. Angie, would Angela. you like to say a few words? Yes, you would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why you're such a good employee. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, I've been with the city officially and unofficially more than 20 years. I started at the Bronzeville Golf and Recreation Center. Um, we were contracted, but we're, the city was paying us. So I've been with the city for more than 20 years, and I really appreciate Stephanie and John for really doing this after so many years. Okay, Thank well, you. Thank well you. deserved. Thank you very much. The Office of Grant Management update report. Mayor, commissioners, good evening. Good evening. We're here today to present our semi-annual report on all the grant progress uh, made over the past six months. And I'm going to introduce you to our grant writing team. These are the two newest grant writers, Charim Guadarrama and Roxana Rosas. Good evening. My name is Charim Guadarrama. I'm one of the grant writers. Um, this evening, we will provide you with an update of our department's progress for the past six months, which includes the city's organ organizational chart uh, the grant updates, uh, standardized forms, and the Grant Writers Consortium. In, in streamlining our grant process, we have divided the city departments among myself and Roxana. I will be the main point of contact for the city departments with the blue or purple flag in the corner and she will provide backup or any assistance that I will need. Um, Roxana will be the main point of contact for the city departments with the pink red flag on the side. Um, we have, um, the departments have been asked to designate a point of contact for the grant department so we can work with them. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about the grants uh, update. Since November 2012, the following include a list of grants the City of Brownsville has been awarded. The total amount, um, the, they total an amount of 5222500 As you may remember, the City of Brownsville has been awarded funds by the Texas Department of Emergency Management to construct for community safe rooms. The last two of those awards were received November 2012 and January 2013. Additional funding from the Texas Department of Emergency Management awarded will provide for a local mitigation plan involving collaborative efforts between the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. Most recently, Brownsville was deemed a 2013 Playful City USA community by Playful City USA Kaboom. Re the recognition facilitates actual funding from Kaboom, which helps communities build playgrounds. Now we're gonna talk about the grant submitted. 
Last fall, the city of Brownsville worked and submitted grants increasing the city's recent efforts in going green. The city of Brownsville proposed the application of energy efficient technologies that would facilitate increased energy savings at City Hall. Hike and bike trail enhancements that will afford improvements to the Brownsville Metropolitan uh, Planning Organization transportation system and work to promote both the general welfare and economic development of the Brownsville Metropolitan Planning Organization. The education efforts involving collaborative efforts sampling of local resacas among UTV faculty, staff, and students local school districts, students and nonprofit efforts, among, among others. The cultural endeavors involving world-renowned artist Angel Cabrales and his proposed progressive rails project that will incorporate Bronzeville transportation past into the future. These are, this is a summary of the grants were submitted and each one is described in that list, but I just wanted to give a little a summary of each one. And here is Roxana. Good evening. As for our standard operating procedures, uh, our department has created new standardized forms to help provide better structure to our grant process and also to help us uh, effectively manage and monitor the grant process from idea creation to execution. Our forms begin with the needs assessment form and the grant summary form. The grant needs assessment form allows us to assess each city department and organization needs. And the grant summary form is essentially a summary of potential grant opportunities. The grant applicant capacity form is an extension of the grant needs assessment form and it allows us to assess uh, departments that have previously worked on grants and any lessons learned from the experience. The termination to pursue a grant opportunity form is a form that details the reasons why a grant opportunity will no longer be pursued by the organizations involved. The grant consultation form will determine all partnering applicants' roles and responsibilities. And the grant post-submission form will serve as a follow-up after submission of a grant. The grant award form will serve as an agreement by all involved parties to carry out the roles and responsibilities of the grant when we have been awarded. And the grant report agreement form will serve as an agreement to carry out the reporting requirements of each respective grant. I'm gonna move on to the Grant Writers Consortium. The Grant Writers Consortium is a community of grant writers throughout Brownsville and Southern Cameron County. Uh, in April of this year, uh, the Office of Grant Management in collaboration with United Brownsville held the 2013 Grant Writers Consortium. All attendees included members of United Brownsville. During the consortium, uh, we engaged in several in exercises uh, within the members and within the attendees. And one of them was what you see here. Essentially, each entity broke down their grant process and their grant requirements. And the major takeaway from this exercise is that we realized that each entity has their own unique process. So moving forward with the grant consortium, this is where we would like to be. We essentially want to synthesize the grant process to include all the members of the consortium in order to promote collaboration. Moving forward, our department is working closely with United Brownsville and Congressman Vela's office to plan health and education summits for late fall of this year and early spring of next year. Uh, as far as the Grant Writers Consortium I, I just mentioned, we will be having quarterly meetings in which each entity will come to the table and talk about potential grant opportunities to promote collaboration. Again, we will be having monthly follow-ups with each city departments in order to better assess their needs. And presently, 
The grant opportunities that our department is working on include the Federal Land Access Program, or FLAP, and the purpose of the project will be to connect the Rosaca de la Palma off of Paredes Line Road Battlefield to the current hike and bike trail near Galveston Road. In addition, we're also working on Strong Cities, Strong Communities, or SC2, which will provide technical assistance to the city for economic development initiatives. And lastly, we are presently pursuing, pursuing funding opportunities for after-school reading programs. And as always, please check our website for more information. Very good, very good. Thank you. Any questions, commissioners? Thank you so much, Stephanie and group. Very good. Item four, consent agenda items A through K. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item five, consideration and action to appoint one member to the Brownsville Citizens Advisory Committee. Mayor, commissioners, unfortunately we had one of our members resign from the committee, um, Ms. Berta Alonso. So I'm here today to, <coughs> to have you appoint either Omar Garcia or Susan M. Walker to their position. I have a question for you, Stephanie. Um, last week we appointed Rodney Gomez under the impression that he was in District 2, and now it's his 3. Was he a District 3 resident? What's going on with that? He was District 2. This is, this okay. is an error. I'm sorry. Okay. Do I hear? Move to approve Susan Walker. Okay. Do second. I hear a second? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you, Stephanie. Tell congratulations, Susan Walker. <laughs> um, okay. Item number six. Item number six, public hearing and action. On first reading of ordinance number 2013-1070-F to amend chapter 50 of the code of ordinances by adopting the 2012 edition of the International Fire Code, including appendices A through G, and dealing with related matters. Honorable Mayor, uh, Commissioners, we're here for you to ask to adopt the new 2012 edition of the International Fire Codes. Uh, this will upgrade the city code to its newest version of the International Fire Code. Our current 2006 codes were adopted in November of 2007. Uh, we we're piggybacking last week's uh, uh, building codes that you adopted, basically. So we'll fall in line, so the builders with this and theirs will fall in line and they'll be able to go with the same codes and it'll be easier for the builders to understand what we need. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Well, that, was, that was public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm, public hearing. Uh, Lenny, better yes, come back over here. Um, <laughs> it, this is a public hearing. Yes, sir. And so does anybody wish to make a comment or be heard? About time? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Okay, then I have a motion to close public hearing. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Now we have the action item. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. About time. No, carries. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Item number seven, second public hearing on action on the second substantial amendment to the fiscal year 2012-2013 HUD Community Development Block Grant Program funding allocation. Mayor, Commissioners, um, I was here last week for the first public hearing and this is our second. And just to, to summarize, just to summarize the proposed changes, I'll, I'll present those to you again. But there will be, we're proposing a reduction of $535,000 to the Sports Park Community Center um, to increase the, to make funding available for the shortfalls for the Portway Acres Park Improvement and the Oliveda Skate Park. The second proposed change was to eliminate the Belden Trail Project um, and from the, there was additional funding that we were able to obtain. 
This is a it, public hearing. I think hearing. this is second public hearing. Yes. I guess we have to have any public comment. Do you need another 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 hearing after this? We'll close. No. no. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, public <laughs> hearing is closed. Action item. Motion to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item number eight. Item number eight, public hearing and action to authorize the City of Brownsville Police Department to apply for fiscal year 2013 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant program application in the amount of $55,916. Mayor and City Commissioners, the Brownsville Police Department is requesting your authorization to apply for this grant in the amount of $55,916. The BPD and, uh, will serve as a fiscal agent into this grant and funding with the grant will be shared between the City of Brownsville and Cameron County and will be used to, for equipment purchases, and this is a public hearing. Any comment on this? Move to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Action. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And Chief, congratulations on your exercise program for your department. Thank you very I, much. You know, I'd like to kind of know more about it as we go along and see how it's going, and maybe we'll join you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Item 9, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2013-012-S to allow a professional office G classification, specific use classification <coughs> in a dwelling A classification for 0.791 acres of El Jardín Terrace subdivision located at 4765 Padre Allen Highway. Mayor, City Commission, um, this is a protested ordinance, so in order to pass this commission, it will have to have six of seven votes. Um, the, the issue here is um, this is a, uh, this is the Home Depot uh, right out just off of Four Corners, and these are all the houses. There's a, there's a, a little last residential pocket um, along Padre Island, uh, Padre Island Highway. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, declined this request. Uh, the applicant always has a, a, an opportunity to appeal to the commission uh, for, for your decision. Um, <clears throat> and they declined, I think, on a, on a five to two vote or something like that. So, um, so this, is, this is in front of you today. And um, we, we've gone through many iterations of this. Uh, initially, it was a, a zoning case. Then it was a specific use which is what it is before you tonight, a specific use case. Um, and the neighborhood, uh, I got to commend the neighborhood. They, they came out to every meeting that we've had for the past two months. Uh, and they've, they've been very vocal about their opposition to this, uh, to this uh, application. Uh, the planning department at initially did uh, support this application. And only because uh, Padre Island Highway is a very, um, uh, it's, it's a very commercial area. Uh, this little pocket of, um, of this property here is also zoned first commercial, which is exactly what um, the applicant is asking for. Um, so um, it really is, uh, it, like I said, it's a protested ordinance, and if you have any questions. Let me know, on the yes. F, um, it's first commercial. Is there anything on there right now? No, it's all, it's residential. Um, the owner... We found the owner didn't even know when she bought it. Didn't even know it was zone commercial. She uses it as a residence, um, and she'll continue to use it as a residence. Um, we found through a case in 1980 that it was rezoned at some point first commercial. So, um, so that's true. So I'll, it is okay. a public this, hearing. This is a public hearing, and we'll go ahead and entertain everyone who wishes to speak, please. I think that's really cool that everybody came out and defended it. <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Graciela Hinojosa, and I live in that F lot there. Uh, it was grandfather commercial, and we've always we lived there for 22 years, and we have always used it as residential. Uh, coming from the bridge to the island, that's the only green area that we have. Um, when the Home Depot came on the other side of the Risaca. It took away a lot of privacy. The parking lot lights, they turn off at 11. Having another parking, a parking lot next to my next door neighbor will take away the last piece 
the, of the privacy we have. Um, this is our fourth time we come here to protest in this matter. We have submitted a petition from all the neighbors. We are all opposed for the requested change. Um, Mrs. Garcia submitted um, a map or a sketch, I don't know how to call it, to zoning for two buildings. Originally she said that she wanted uh, a commercial, but then she said, well, it was not allowed, so she requested a permit to build a professional building. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Ramiro Gonzalez, and she submitted um, a little sketch with two buildings. Uh, she told, she, they said they wanted it for the back, the back of the building, the second building, facing the Risaca will be rented for other business. Then when Mrs. Garcia came, she said that it was for storage. And my question was, uh, why would you have two separate buildings for storage? Or how many customers or clients or people that you're not going to be working in that, that space? And also, this is the second smaller property of, the, of this area. And I don't think it's fair that somebody might come to our neighborhood and stall away our privacy. And we also have, on the other side of the Saka, there's a protected area, it's a sanctuary. And this is the, the, the green that we have and we love. And I just remember your slogan for your campaign was because I believe in, in Brownsville, so I believe in Brownsville too, and I want to protect what we have there. Okay. Thank you. I put you on the spot, did not I? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, good evening, Commissioners, Mayor. My name's Eileen Leeds, and I live on the, um, probably the, I don't know if it's westmost end uh, of that little area. Um, it really is a unique area in the city. If you're coming from the island, all of a sudden you see these old, huge trees. If you're coming from Mexico going towards the island, it's an area of old, huge trees. On the other side of the Resaca um, is a bird sanctuary. And as we told planning and zoning, the birds don't know. They only have one side of the Resaca. Everybody that has lived there has maintained their area. Um, one of the planning and zoning um, people said, well, you know, you're standing in the way of progress. My response to that was progress doesn't mean cement. And the trees there are unique. The area is unique. We have species of birds and animals that you probably can't find in a lot of places. Just the other day, I saved a turtle about this big for my neighbor's dogs. I mean, it, they, it's, a, it's a very special area. And we are very much afraid of the domino effect. One goes and they'll all keep going. And, um, you know, as Ramiro said, my neighbors, we aren't a lot of us, but my neighbors have been here consistently opposing this because we care for the area, we care for the environment, we care for the flora and fauna that are there, and we're hoping you will protect it as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Next. Ramiro. 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 Just, if, if you don't, don't mind, how are you doing? Uh, uh, Ramiro, uh, Commissioner, you have a, a question for Ramiro? Do they have a, a homeowners association? No, they don't. Okay. We will. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit. I mean, is everyone here opposed to it? Is that yes. the, the idea? Okay, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to. Go ahead. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Cristóbal Torres. Cristóbal Torres. Cristóbal Torres. Good afternoon. My name is Cristóbal Torres. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> quiero pedirles. Uh, que ya tenemos varias ocasiones que hemos venido a, a, estos, a estas juntas aquí. I wanted to let you know that we have come to uh, these meetings on several occasions. Y con el propósito de cambiar, porque vivimos en una zona residencial. For the purpose of changing, because we do live right now in a residential area. Aparte de eso, tenemos una zona 
una de las más hermosas de la ciudad de Brownsville. And besides that, we live and are in one of the most beautiful zones in the city of Brownsville. Tenemos un, un si ustedes se lo ignoraban, por lo, es, es una de las zonas. And if you're not aware or did not know this. Es un santuario donde la grulla anida. Uh, y it is a zone and an area, well it's a sanctuary and I'm the owner of one, that area, where we have a stork that ha, uh, nests there. We have unique wildlife there actually. We do. Este, y no podemos eh, llegar a comprar un terreno, tumbar cuanto árbol nos estorbe. And we can't just go and buy a piece of land and then knock down any tree that's blocking the area. Y últimamente después uh, se tumbaron tres palmas, dos altas y una pequeña. And at the very last they did knock down uh, several palm trees, two very tall palm trees, one a short one. Y la señora que dice que las palmas tienen termita. And the lady says that the palm trees had termites. Pero las palmas como son de fibra no, no les cae la termita. O But sea, since the palm trees are fibrous, they don't have termites. Entonces yo lo que estoy preguntando es, eh, sigue continuando tumbando árboles, talando árboles. And what I'm questioning is if they keep on knocking and, and down these trees. Y, y se tumbaron árboles que tenían más de 100 años. No podemos ser tan criminales that, así. They're knocking down trees that are over 100 years old, Kiki? Sí. Kiki. Y no podemos ser tan criminales de tumbar árboles así. No más por... such, such Lo único que les pido es que quede asentado de que no podemos hacer lo que nosotros queremos. I, o sea, I would el, like it to be uh, noted that we can't just always do what we want to do. Yo por eso me siento orgulloso de vivir aquí en, en la ciudad de Brownsville. And that's why I feel, feel very proud of living in the city of Brownsville. Porque es una ciudad de leyes, de Because respeto. It's a city of laws that are respected. Y de disciplina. And y de, a city of discipline. Y debemos acatarlas. And les pido humildemente, les pido humildemente a ustedes que and consideren y reconsideren. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias a usted. Gracias. If I could, Mayor, that I, I know for a fact that does happen to be one of the most special pieces of the city because it's District 2. <laughs> But um, I, I am absolutely against this because I am from right around the corner of that area and it is a very, very special habitat for animals and I agree with you. So. Okay. Um, is there, we have some more? Or, or is there anybody in favor? Oh, you have one person. Okay, well, I, I don't want to stop that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Whoever else is next. Briefly, good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Karen Pena, and I'm one of the owners of that sanctuary. Um, it's about a 20-acre um, tract of land, and we have a lot of beautiful wildlife on this land, not just birds, not just turtles. This morning, my dogs almost caught a, I don't know what the animal is. It's not a possum. It's, uh, I want to say a badger. No, it's, it was bigger than a nutrient, but I called the dogs off. <laughs> Because uh, we do have unique wildlife on that land. Um, if you're not aware of this tract of land, it's right by Four Corners. It's on a very busy highway. I want to say one of the, one of the last bastions of acreage in Brownsville that has this wildlife. So we're trying to hold on to it, keep it as such as the sanctuary for the city of Brownsville. We need green areas in the town. And thank you for your thank time. Thank you, Karen. And and just so everybody so knows she's one of my dear friends. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Anyone else is going to speak? I think you've got some, another young lady there. Good evening. My name is Maricela G. Regis, and I reside with my mother at 4949 Padre Island Highway. And I just became the mother of nine little ducklings. We lost four of them. I don't know to whom. Uh, and it's like they say, there's beautiful birds, the turtles, and everything else that you can imagine. Of course, I don't like the possums and <laughs> anything else because they scare me to death. Plus, my dog wants to keep one in the house. <laughs> She's not going to do it. 
It's a beautiful location. It's a beautiful area. I would welcome anyone who wants to see and wants to experience what we have been privileged to experience. Even when my godmother was living, uh, it was always to feed the ducks. It was always to take care of every animal that was in there. Even now, my mom, she's 85 years old, and if we're, she's not feeding the birds, she's out with the ducks or the dogs or whatever comes around. I think that turtle that uh, this lady talked about, uh, <coughs> I found it under my car and I took it to the Rusaka. So if anybody else got it, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's a beautiful area. It's bad enough we have to deal with the traffic that we have there and a lot of the other commotion, but it's like I say, let, let this be. I mean, it's, it's a small area. You see the picture. I don't know why anybody would want to go ahead. And I understand, you know, progress will continue and eventually we will all die and some, something will go up there. But meanwhile, let us enjoy what we've got. Appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you, sir. I wanted to give the applicant an opportunity to come up sure. if she would like. <coughs> Hello. How are you? My name is Martha Garcia. Um, back in, I think it was April, I originally applied to rezone it for a commercial four. And the city called me and said, you know what, we support a commercial one. And I said, well, I can go ahead and build my office there as commercial one. And I said, well, that's fine. So we switched the application to commercial one. Um, then we came to the meeting and they said, well, we'll support a, a specific use. So I went ahead and I did the plans and everything, and of course, you know, the neighbors have come. Uh, they have um, voiced their concern on the trees. As, as you can see in that picture, I'm not gonna remove any trees anymore there. Um, actually, if, if you put the, my plan up there, I'm going to plant a lot of palm trees and trees that you can see right there. Uh, I do have existing palm trees in the back there are the, the tall palm trees that you see on um, Palm Boulevard. I have some in the front, um, and uh, those will not be removed. I already have a, uh, a fence on one side, a fence on the other. I have the resaca in the back. I have Boca Chica traffic in the front. All my parking is going to be in the back of the building, so you can continue to look residential. But I'm not tearing down any more trees. I'm not doing any of that. The trees that were there before were torn down because the house was torn down. It was built back in the 60s. And those trees did have termite. But we are replanting a lot more than there is right now. Um, that, that property uh, has been clear of anything for two years already. It's not that I'm doing anything to the birds or the ducks or anything that, that lives in that area. I'm actually gonna beautify it. Um, um, let me see. So then I went ahead and, and I applied for the specific use and uh, we already have a commercial one property on one side um, and then like, like they were saying, I mean, I'm not going to sell alcohol. I'm not going to you know, have a lot of traffic. Actually, I'm, the, nothing is gonna happen to the fluency of the traffic there because it's already a lot of traffic. Uh, if you see my plans is to go in one side and come out the other to help the, tr the, tra the traffic of going in and, and coming out. So you won't see all that people, c you know, people coming in or, or out because it's gonna be my parking's in the back. That building in the back is for storage. I have business with dads and according to dads, I have to keep my records for five years. To IRS, it's three years after you have uh, filed. So it's just a lot of records that we have to keep and we have to keep them confidential. So it's better somewhere nearby where we can lock it and um, you know, we can go about our business. Um, I, I know that they're uh, you know, worried about the greenery. There's actually more than there is right now in my plans. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Carmen Duncan, and I'm here to support this um, 
change. Uh, we're not planning on doing anything uh, to damage what already exists. Um, they had said that they didn't like that building in the back, which we're planning on using for storage. And the reason we also want to place it there, granted that they um, required about 20 feet from the resaca uh, to where you could actually build something. And that also is going to help, you know, uh, whenever we have the traffic so that it won't contaminate any of the resaca. You know, it, it's going to serve as a wall for that. Uh, we have addressed all of their concerns, practically. They were talking about the lights. Uh, the business hours are going to be from 8 to 5. We don't see why we need to have tall lights uh, and on after that. Um, let me see what else. Greenery, everything is there. We are not going to damage. They have their buildings. They have their houses. I, I believe we should be entitled to also have our building in that area. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming tonight. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, I, you all have I was just going to ask if, say if this project is shot down uh, and someone decides to make it residential and they build a house, they're pretty much going to have to develop the, the piece of land. Well, it already is residential, <clears throat> so we don't have to downzone or anything. So they could just build, they could go into the building to permit department tomorrow and what but what what I'm saying is the impact is going to be the same whether it, I mean structure wise if it's residential or commercial um, depends on the size of the house I mean the environmentally uh, when you put a parking lot you put more more asphalt you put more concrete that's just common sense I'm you know I'm not an engineer or anything but um, you know that's it, 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 it the impact of the property if you put a commercial site on it is more it's if you're if you're if you're worried about environmental yeah it is it, it is common sense that they have yeah. more pavement but they do have more mitigation trees don't they um i think you get into a very technical i mean where is that water running is that water being is that water being treated before it hits the resaca um and here i and, and under our current code i don't think we require like a like a buffer uh, that treats that water before so let's say you park your car, the oil leaks, then it rains. Where is that water going? If, if that do water, we have, do we have something that filters the water on on 48 that goes into the Rosaka? No, no, no. Cur currently, the, the the water that hits the pavement anywhere just goes straight into the Rosaka. Well, a, a retention pond and then a Rosaka. So, but in this case, there would probably be no. I mean, a small retention pond, but yeah. not enough. Not enough to really address any environmental concerns. Anybody? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Garcia mentioned that when she applied for a rezoning, did the residents come in and uh, and voice their concerns when she was approved for, for she, the rezoning? She was not approved. They they came to the first meeting and the case came as a first commercial case, um, and we we thought we told her well we, we might be able, you might be able to get some community support with a specific use because it allows us to specifically Same ask for different, yeah. yeah, set some more restrictions. Um, and the, you know, the community, the, the, the neighborhood still came out in force um, as you see today. Um, and they've come to about four or five meetings, I believe. So it's, it's been a progress to try to uh, address some of the concerns, um, but, um, and they have been addressed some of them, but they still remain in opposition as you so can see. So it is, right, as of right now, it is zoned residential? It is zoned residential. Okay. Okay. And my my question, Armido, just to make it clear, this did not pass planning and zoning. It did not pass. It was, it was denied. That's why it's a protested case. That's why case it's here. here. But the one on yes. Central did. Okay. And you have all the signatures up and down on on that side of 48. So. Motion to close public hearing. If I hear a second. Oh. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to deny. Motion. Is there a petition, you say? The petition, and it, it, so it will require six out of seven. Right, so there is a petition, that's yes. what I'm asking. Okay. Yes. So there's a motion to deny on, 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 on the floor. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to deny? Aye. 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 We have one, two, three, four. 
Okay, it's denied. <coughs> Item number 10, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2013-024 to rezone from apartment G classification to medium retail G classification for the front point 91 acres out of block 21 of Brownsville Land and Improvement Company subdivision located near 553 North Iowa Avenue. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. As you can see, the map projected on the screen, the area uh, shaded in red is the area requesting the changes on him from apartment G to a 3CG, which is medium retail. Uh, this was before the advisory, uh, before the city commission, planning and zoning commission, and recommended approval of this uh, case. As what you can see, this is on Iowa, which is, is not there. Right on the on the south part of the map is uh, Boca Chica, which is the airport, part of the airport. What's in G? What's located in the G area? <coughs> this, the, uh, the street down going uh, south, north, no, north, south is Iowa. It's, uh, this property is fronting on Iowa. Uh, right at the bottom uh, is Bowie Road, but out of the page, out of the map, is Boca Chica, which is uh, north of Boca Chica. We have another map. You can put it in the other map. <clears throat> the other one, please. No, that's the only one we have there. Yeah, this is uh, Iowa, as you can see right, right there, and that's the property. There's a, uh, the family owns all the houses on the property. They just want to uh, uh, have some type of business on, uh, on the front of their property. Any other? This is public hearing. Anyone have any comments on this one? Move to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Order approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 11, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2013-025-S to allow a duplex specific use in a dwelling Z classification for lot 16, block one of Houston Estate subdivision located at 480 Pedernales Circle. Uh, again, we have another map checked on the screen. As you can see, this is a subdivision uh, near or south of Houston Road and um, uh, north of Boca Chica Boulevard. This area is, uh, was um, annexed, probably uh, the last annex of the, of the city of Brownsville. And on that property or on that subdivision, there's already most of the area are duplexes. But now that is uh, inside the city, the, resi the uh, zoning does not allow a duplex. In order to get a duplex, they, they will have to apply for a specific use. And this is a specific use just for a duplex. But before, because it was county, they allowed the duplex. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have a, a zoning uh, ordinance on the, on the, the county. And um, all this, uh, area right here, 95% are duplexes, and a couple of more other on, the, on this, uh, the rest of the area. But on this line right here, I will say 95% are duplexes. Mm -hmm. And actually this is between duplexes. And of, of course the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of the subdivision. Do we have any I'm sorry, go ahead. No, any public hearing on this one? Any public comment? Move to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's number 11. Move to approve. Second. Somebody second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, before you go to number 12, uh, Ramito, and again, this may be just me and Noe, uh, you guys are doing a great job, but it seems like we've taken an inordinate amount of time going through some of these, you know, variances, changes, when 99% of the people already there are duplexes. Can, and again, commissioners, please feel free. Um, I would like to see you guys explore something that might be, you know, solving some of these problems 
uh, without having to just go through this sort of exercise, because we do an inordinate amount of time on this kind of issues, most all the meetings that we have, so. Yeah, and especially in subdivisions and areas like this, that's what I was gonna, the comment, but I was gonna yeah. talk to well, you give Well, give us some options or give us some things uh, that you guys know within your expertise to offer to the commission and just email it to us during, between the next, now that we have a little bit of a break, so that we can kind of consider them, okay? And so, mm -hmm. nothing, yeah, and, and, no, and, no criticism, it's just <laughs> I think that yeah. maybe we ought to think about something. And like we that. appreciate that, but actually there's two more cases and there were a couple of cases before that we take the initiative of some areas changing the zoning and take the whole area, uh, subdivision areas, uh, well, uh, I, 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 I feel assured that there's probably a little different way to do this and, than, than the way we're doing it now, but it's it's part of the process. So yes, sir. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Number twelve. Item twelve: Public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number two thirty-five dash twenty thirteen dash zero twenty-six to rezone from dwelling Z classification to medium retail G classification for lot seven of Bautista subdivision located at six seventy-five North Dakota. <laughs> Again, we have another. Map, which is very close to the previous one. And again, this is one of the new areas annexed into the city. And there's a couple of uh, already commercial buildings on this uh, North Dakota. <coughs> but since now they're inside the city, they need to rezone in order to continue their business or uh, add to the building. Uh, this is for from residential, which is dwelling Z, uh, to uh, medium retail G. And there's other businesses in that area that are medium retail? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So, but there were an existing before, and their grandfather. And this is one of the areas that we work in uh, um, to convert into the existing business or the existing use of the area. Okay, this is public comment. Anybody have any comments out there? Move to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 13, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2013-029-S to allow apartment G specific use in a dwelling A classification for lot one, block one of Alpha subdivision located at 537 Wild Rose Lane. Uh, at the request of um, the applicant and trying to uh, work with the neighborhood, uh, we're gonna table 13 and 14, so. 13 and 14? 13? Yeah. Okay. So if Let you me could read table. number 14 for you, please, into the record. Item 14, public hearing and action on first reading of, or of protested ordinance number 235-2013-030-S to allow a medium retail G classification and apartment F classification specific use in a professional <coughs> office G classification for lot one, block one of Templo Bethel subdivision located near South Central Avenue and Via Madrid Al Avenue. Motion to table. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Item number 15. Item 15, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2013-909 to rezone from dwelling Z classification to dwelling G classification for 28 acres of the Grove subdivision located near Salida de Luna and North Minnesota Avenue. <coughs> Uh, Mayor City Commission, this is one of these things where we try to we try to get it right and uh, avoid any issues. Um, every now and then, the building the building uh, permit division uh, gets a, an, a an application, um, and the plat on this on this subdivision says that it, it's a, a 25 foot setback requirement from the front yard, um, but the, the the zoning actually says 30 feet. So what we're just trying to do is just trying to uh, marry the two and make sure that. Uh, it's a simple process for for the residents that that want to build uh, want to build here in this in this neighborhood. So we Just ask for your approval. This is the setback. It, this is to to clean up the setback issue between the plat and the zoning. So that's all that this is doing. Addressing that's the it. setback. That's it. Okay. Public comment. Mr. Fisher, did you have a public yes, comment? Yes, Mr. Martinez. Thank you so much. Yes, this is one of our neighborhoods. Okay. Could you please? My name is Dutch Fisher. Um, this is one of our neighborhoods. I'm here on behalf of the Declarant. Also, I'm, I'm here on behalf of 16 homeowners that we're getting ready to build homes for, plus three that already have them. We just want everything to agree with what our CC&Rs say. Okay. Thank you, sir. Motor close. 
Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 16. Item number 16, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2013-910 to rezone from light retail F classification to light retail G classification. The 23 acres out of block 19 of El Jardin subdivision located near Old Port Isabel Road and FM 802. This is also uh, the same type of case, uh, it's city initiated uh, and it's going from uh, a 2CF to a 2CG. Uh, and once again, it's really just to, to make sure that those setbacks and everything correlates. Um, so PNZ unanimously approved and we ask for your approval today. Any public comment? Stella, I think it's time for you to close. Move to close. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say hi. Aye. aye. Motion carries. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 17, public comment. There are no com public comments okay. uh, signed you. in. Item number 18. Item number 18, consideration and action on resolution number 2013-041 to authorize an interlocal agreement between the city of Brownsville, Texas and the city of Lawrence, Kansas to purchase transit buses. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, the city of Brownsville is the lead agency in a joint procurement contract with Gillick LLC of Hay Hayward, California. My microphone just broke, I don't know what happened. That's it. <laughs> don't touch it. Okay. Bring the food on better. For the, deli <laughs> for the yeah, delivery of a maximum of 75 heavy-duty wheelchair lift equipped fixed route transit buses. Uh, under this contract, the City of Brownsville may assign buses to other agencies under a cooperative agreement. The City of Lawrence, Kansas is requesting the opportunity to purchase buses through this contract. <coughs> Chapter 791 of the Texas Government Code authorizes local governments to contract to the greatest extent possible. Staff is requesting authorization from the City Commission for the city manager to sign an interlocal agreement between the city of Brownsville and the city of Lawrence, Kansas, to allow them to purchase uh, said buses under said contract. Okay, as, long, as long as Jessica abstains, we'll probably be hoping. Would approve. <laughs> <laughs> Would approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 19, consideration and action on resolution number 2013 044, <laughs> 042, okay, excuse Jessica. me to authorize an interlocal agreement between the City of Brownsville, Texas and Snowmass what Village, Colorado to purchase transit buses. Under the same um, conditions of the previous item, uh, the staff is requesting authorization for the city from the City Commission for the City Manager to assign, to, for the City Manager to sign an interlocal agreement between the City of Brownsville and the City of Snowmass Village, Colorado to allow them to purchase transit buses under said contract. Who do approve? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 20. Thank you. Item 20, consideration and action to authorize and execute an interlocal agreement between the City of Brownsville Police Department and Cameron County, Texas, regarding the, F the fiscal year 2013 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant in the amount of $55,916. Mayor Commissioners, this ties into the earlier um, item on this grant, and we require an interlocal agreement between the city and the county to proceed with this grant and we're requesting this. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 21, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of ammunition for the Brownsville Police Department. And this contract is in the amount of $71,799.50 allows the police department to obtain pistol duty ammo and rifle duty ammo and training ammo for the upcoming yearly qualifications and uh, this is through GT distributors out of Austin, and we're requesting authority to enter into this, uh, this agreement. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Commissioner? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Target. 